Okay, everyone, stand to your feet tall. Put your hands in the air, and here we go. Get ready. Rapture practice, right? Ever heard that one? I had a youth pastor who used to say that all the time, in jest, of course. Though I think he may actually have meant it. Who knows? Pretty sure one does not have to practice for the rapture. But this is serious. Is the rapture real? What is it? When does it take place? Before the tribulation? In the middle? After? Or what? what? What's that? Did I just hear a trumpet? Oh, no, wait, that, that was the dog next door. Does Messiah return before, during, or after? Why doesn't the Bible not provide detail, including timing of such a critical, prophetic event? Are you kidding? That is unthinkable indeed, because it does when we read it. Most just ignore it. And I am talking about the most famous of pastors. For no man knows the day or hour, right? Right? Messiah continues as he tells us, We remnant believers will know the season, even providing at least two parables that tell us so. But people will be eating, drinking, and merry. They'll be unaware, right? He'll come as a thief in the night. Right, absolutely. People will. But the true ecclesia will know the season and be ready. And who says white men can't dance? Well, he does clearly, right? Can we really go around speculating based on added opinion of, unfortunately, what can be termed inept scholars? The definition of leaven rebuked, really. Not if we want to know the truth, and we find that in the word. For instance, who is this guy? Certainly not the Hebrew Yahusha. When Messiah defines this event and its time, Paul affirms it multiple times, as well as John the Revelator. Even Second Esdras nails it down, we will cover, and is the origin of both of those in mindset scripturally, as it came first. Oh, Daniel also deals with this, as does Jeremiah, and we'll cover, and the Qumran scrolls left by the exiled temple priest even define this for us. I mean, the real question is, how can we not know the timing of the rapture, and how can we be so misled? And what exactly are they debating as how illiterate to continue such all these years when scripture is so clear on this? We will end this debate and prove there is none. Just a puppet show of willing ignorance. Who is the court jester there? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's make this more relevant today. Here is the worship band trying to mimic the behavior of the world. I've been there, done that, and ain't doing it ever again. By the end of these two rapture videos, you are going to know firmly what the Bible says and its timing of the rapture event, as well as what it is. And you will find most of the modern church has a view representing strange doctrine as it simply doesn't match scripture and it better. Is this a different event from the second coming, for instance? Well, what does the Bible say of its timing? And the question is very easy to answer. Or is this a tool, leavening scripture, meant to keep believers apathetic and complacent? When many even say the words, I'm glad I won't be here for the tribulation. Sure, one can attempt to then find every scripture that says believers will be removed from harm. But again, 
Do we even read the whole sentence or the scripture before and after in context to find whether it even tells us when we are removed from harm? You will find most do not do that and the scripture does tell us. But I don't want to go through the zombie apocalypse, so we hear. My God would never allow me to suffer. Have those even read scripture at all? This is one of the defining doctrines of the final eagle head of the synagogue of Satan and the Nicolaitans, who worship pagan holidays and pagan gods and goddesses. One in which scripture is not silent, and truly cannot be misread. We can follow these deceivers throughout history, really identifying them by such doctrines, which are against scripture, as they lead the lambs to slaughter. They even use a scriptural term left behind, formed the opposite of how it is even used. You'll see, as it is actually good and blessed to be left behind. How about that? Many have requested this over the years and some may even regret that as these two videos will test the rapture and prove it out, ending debate, because scripture always has. It is time to restore the word which is always defined the rapture in timing and context. Ladies and gentlemen, the rapture will now be understood. Welcome to another Answers in Second Esdras, produced by The God Culture, one of the most revealing series on all of YouTube. I'm sorry, despite being censored, hacked, toyed with in just about every way, we've continued to raise the bar in reading and understanding the Bible. And the things that the Holy Spirit has been revealing are amazing. And this is why we have agitators coming into our comments to try to confuse and manipulate. But you're too smart to let them get away with that. Many times, with a simple little piece of gum, they try to slow up the works. Of course, that is all they are really capable of. These people hate you and I, and that is what drives them. They don't want us to know the truth. They don't want the Philippines to rise, in fact. See, we prove our positions, and they can't disprove them, but they just try to leave a little doubt to question. They drop trash for one to stumble upon. Now, we know much of this is even one blogger paid to do so, as well as a communist group, all failures, and hard to believe anyone would be so worthless in existence to accept such a charge. But who cares? Don't let another new name distract you, uh, nor another new channel for them, even one now running ads after calling that wrong many times. Talk about hypocrites and frauds. Especially, well, instead of, with this comment, Toby Mac, the famous Christian singer and rapper, oh no, this is Toby Mick. <laughs> commenting, and this is his first comment, and that's what you'll typically see. These are first-time commenters talking about how they've loved all of our videos. Well, there's 350 there, and this is your first comment, and it's negative? Yeah, right. He leads people to the Geneva Bible to try to claim this little piece of nothing information actually serves to refute that extensive video. This is how they operate. Like one verse could even do that. You got to be kidding. How ignorant. But here's what's awesome. Fate Laz, not sure their real name, but that's their name on YouTube, took out their Geneva Bible and read this passage, including the margin note. Imagine that. Wouldn't you know this blogger, looks like an idiot yet again, because the margin note clarifies the meaning in the perspective of the translators as wonderful departing from the faith. 
or same as falling away in the KJV, not just departing, as in raptured, which is erroneous. It's not even there and doesn't even mean that, according to the very translators who translated that as that word. So, no, it's not what they meant. This is why we don't use other translations. I mean, it's very, very rare that you'll see us even bring one up. We go back to the Greek and the Hebrew. Then we'll get a comment. Well, I don't like when you call out trolls. Well, here you go. Uh, Right, you mean you are a troll and you have been exposed. Oops, (laughs) tough luck. Bet you don't like it, no doubt. But we will do that as often as we choose. How about you stop trolling and agitating, and we're happy to not mention you. If anyone ever sincerely watches this channel and doesn't understand that we are not defensive, Oh, no, that is not what you see here. We are offensive, just as the prophets were and you should be. This is the boldness the church has lost, rendering them impotent. Oh, but I I just want to love, brother. You don't love if you don't show rebuke. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. We were warned. Of this, We rebuke ignorance from whomever it comes, including the supposed highest of scholars and rabbis. Wrong is wrong. If that offends anyone, you are welcome. The truth always offends someone. This is a channel for the mature, not children. We have no time left to placate ignorance nor tickle everyone's little ears. We are in the last century, folks. Watch parts 9 through 11, where we prove that out, and that'll wake a lot of people up. Test it for yourself. It's time to go into Second Esdras now. The origin of much of the New Testament and passages we covered in the last video, which if you haven't seen that, you're going to be missing more than half the context, so go back and watch that first. In a prophetic respect, of course, no wonder this book must be buried and marginalized as apocrypha, a meaningless term of nothing. It doesn't even mean anything. If you're coming into this channel saying, oh, but that's apocrypha, (laughs) you mean it means outside of the Pharisee canon. Who cares? Who cares what the Pharisee canon was? Anyone thinking the Pharisees kept the Bible canon? Who Messiah says takes Torah and turns it against Torah? Has no clue what the Bible even is, nor should be, nor who kept it. And you're accepting a Pharisee Bible in canon, for the Old Testament especially. The temple priests, the biblical keepers of Scripture, document those same Pharisees turned a blind eye to Torah, specifically its calendar in the book of Jubilees, meaning their canon is not the Bible canon and never was. Stick to your Pharisee Bible without testing it, and you will find much leaven, and these books found in the Qumran library of the exiled temple priests where Messiah chose to launch his ministry in Bethabara, which is Qumran, we prove. Proofs of Pharisees had the wrong canon, as did the Catholic Church who used theirs when it comes to the Old Testament rather than that of the temple priest. This fraud is exposed now. Let's restore Second Esdras on this topic of the last days. Open your book of 2 Esdras, chapter 2, verse 23. You will find several mentions of this future time period in this book. It is dynamic. Most of you already know this at this point. Ezra knew in 400 BC, but some come in and comment, well, why are you using the book of 2 Esdras to talk about the rapture? Well, you do realize that you're in the middle of a series titled Answers in Second Esdras, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, in the last video, we didn't even use Second Esdras, and we proved out the rapture timing. So we can do it without it. However, it is the origin of much of this as it was published before. Yes, Messiah is the origin of all things. Let's be clear on that. There's no doubting that. But the doctrine 
begins to be published in this book, in large part. Wheresoever you find the dead, take them and bury them, and I will give you the first place in my resurrection. Now, you will find Tobit in captivity from the lost tribes of the northern kingdom living in Nineveh, especially took this command very seriously and was adamant to see that the dead were buried properly. He was and will be blessed for doing so, and so would all of us. This is an important concept. Is it salvation? No, that's not what he's saying. And to go that far with this, as some do, uh, it would just require ignorance because he defines such later. But we're just warming up here. So check out how far Ezra goes deep into this, again, 400 years before Messiah was even born, long before Revelation was written. Fast forward to verse 29. Here we have a reference to this same event which occurs on the day of judgment, just before the rapture. My hands shall cover you so that your children shall not see hell. Be joyful, O you mother, with thy children, for I will deliver you, says Yahuwah. Now, he is specifically speaking to Israel here, of course. Uh, that is the age of 400 BC. So that's what he's talking about. But this is expanded later to the ecclesia because we are grafted into the kingdom. Uh, we cover that in grafted into the kingdom. Watch it. Remember your children that sleep, the dead, the believers among them. Yes, even 400 years before Messiah, salvation was available. It is not new in the New Testament. And to say so from any pulpit is a complete ignorance of Scripture. For I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth. Now, we're going to cover that one a little more, actually a lot more, in a whole video coming in this series where we're going to deal with where we go when we die. And that will be good. And show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, says Yahuwah Almighty. Indeed, he is merciful. He's not the God of wrath, though he's a righteous judge. Some have mentioned his wrath in comments, for instance. But understand, the tribulation is not Yahuwah's wrath. The day of judgment is. His wrath is final and far more severe. That is when Yahusha will destroy even spirits of man and even angels. That is far larger and lasting ramifications. Turn to chapter 4, verse 36. And unto these things Uriel, the archangel, yes, same one from Enoch, gave them answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, now, Yahuwah knows the number of those who will be saved. For he has weighed the world in the balance. By measure has he measured the times, and by number has he numbered the times. And he does not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. Yahuwah has already decided the time of the end. And he will not change it, including shorten it, which we covered last video. It is what it is, especially since you see it in John, in Revelation, uh, that John wrote, after Messiah's ascension, still is the same three and a half year period as you see in Daniel. So, no, he didn't change it because if he did, well, I guess John didn't get the memo. He has provided a way for us to know this season. Now watch parts 9 through 11 of this series, and you will be enlightened on that. Let's go to chapter 5, verse 1. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the day shall come, that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in great number. Uh-oh, is that the rapture? No, they die during the tribulation. That's what he's talking about. Yes, we know every time they see the word taken or departed, as we covered, <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't even mean raptured. 
and it doesn't here either. The word is not actually used in the Bible, but the concept is there, and we've proven that. It's just not until the day of judgment. And the way of truth shall be hidden. So, see, truth isn't hidden after the rapture. That doesn't make sense. And the land shall be barren of faith. No, no. See, because believers are going through the tribulation in multiple scriptures, which we've already shown you. So there will be some faith. There will be some truth, but it will be hidden and it will be barren. There will be very little of it is really all that it's characterizing there. It most certainly is not saying against scripture that there is a pre-trib rapture. There cannot be according to scripture. Let's turn over to chapter 7, verse 26. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens, which I have told you, shall come to pass. So what time does this come to pass? Let's see. And the bride shall appear. Well, when does that happen? The day of judgment. And she coming forth shall be seen. That now is withdrawn from the earth. Again, we saw in one text that the new Jerusalem is adorned as the bride, essentially. It will appear as the bride. And that very well could be what this reference is. Uh, however, regardless, uh, this is his full bride, the entire ecclesia. Same thing, really, same timing. Those alive who have survived the tribulation and those asleep in the grave together. Remember, they rise first, the ones from the grave, and then the rapture into the air, not heaven. 27. And whosoever is delivered from the forementioned evils, oh, ah, see, shall see my wonders, and indeed we will. No, one is not delivered from the evils by being raptured. That's not there. One is delivered by going through the valley of the shadow of death, right? That's the way scripture works. We don't get to fly over the valley. That's for wussies. <laughs> what wonders? The wonders of the day of judgment seen from the air, the earth remade, all judged, and those wicked ones consumed with fire, including angels, Better than any Hollywood movie, by far, I, no one could even capture this. Uh, it will be amazing. A sight like no man has ever seen, nor will again. Now, Yahuwah, who is speaking here, will recap for Ezra and reveal his son from birth to second coming. Let's cover this. For my son Yahushua shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. And yes, Yahushua was born 400 years after Ezra's time. Indeed, an exact match in prophecy. After these years shall my son Messiah die. So you see the progression. Ezra sees that here, and Messiah dies. And all men that have life. So all men will have eternal life. Now we know this, John 3.16, I mean, how many scriptures do we memorize uh, in that vein? And they are great. Yes, Yahushua died for all men, be clear on that, but we have free will. Only few will accept his salvation. He never forces anything, even if it's good, on you. You have free will. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgments. Now, we progress to the end, the day of final judgment, which he clarifies later is year 7,000. Basically, it appears that may be the seven days here. So that no man shall remain. In the end, on judgment day, you are either in the air with Messiah, or you are destroyed on earth, even in spirit, for good. No man remains on earth at that point, only smoke and dust. And after seven days, the world that yet awake not, so it's not awakened yet, shall be raised up. 
We're at the end. Accounting from the beginning, 7,000 years. Even shows the progression, the dead are raised. Again, watch parts 9 through 11. We cover that in detail. And that shall die, that is, corrupt. All the wicked are then destroyed. The rapture, even the angels, by the way, that are. The rapture is in between. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence, and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. More specifics, that all the dead rise and are judged in that day period. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment. And misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have an end. Whoa, thank you. Whoa. No more wickedness, but judgment only shall remain. Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. Yes. And the work shall follow, and the reward shall be shown, and the good deeds shall be of force, and wicked deeds shall bear no rule. No more wicked deeds, because the wicked are destroyed, and Satan and some of his chief demons, they're locked away for a thousand years to be loosed for a short time later, but they will fail and are then destroyed, and there will be no more Satan ever from that point forward. This is the story. This is where the earth is headed. Some are looking for a utopia, well, in large part, I mean, this is not some communist utopia, but in large part, that's what's happening here. Basically, Yahuwah is ridding the world of evil once and for all. It doesn't mean we won't still have free will. It doesn't mean we can't choose not to serve him, even at whatever point. The reality is, though, no one will, because you just watched from the air. I mean, can you imagine watching the day of judgment and ever forgetting that? I don't care how many thousands of years passes, we will not. Let's go forward to chapter 9 in 2nd Esdras. Amazing how much Ezra deals with this. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and faith. <laughs> Oops, uh, not faith alone, folks. That's not scripture. Yes, we're saved by faith. We're saved by grace. But it doesn't stop there, and it can't. We must have works. One asked, what works? Well, we covered last video. His works are defined as keeping his commandments. That's his works. And yes, the same ones, as always, they've never changed. You are not saved by works, okay? But they are the sign of your faith. If you do not have them, you do not have faith. And you are not saved. Sorry, that's fact. James nailed this when he said, Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith with works. Faith without works is not only dead, where does faith come from? Hearing and hearing by the word of Yahuwah. And that requires effort, work. Sit on your faith and do nothing, and it is not faith, but dead. Whereby you have believed shall be preserved from the said perils. You mean raptured out of them? Nope, it does not say that. You are not preserved by being taken away from, but by going through the said perils. And that is so clear in abundant scripture. And see my salvation in my land and within my borders. Well, wait a minute. That's still on earth there, guys. You're going to see the salvation. Okay, that, that's, that's, that means physically still there. For I have sanctified them for me. From the beginning. See, he knew, in fact, in Second Esther, as he tells us, he knew exactly what happened, what would happen from the beginning. He knew man would turn away 
But he continued anyway. And many would say, well, why would he do that? Well, of course you don't understand. See, he believes you are worth it. He made the world for the righteous and for you. And for him, this is only seven days. 7,000 years is only seven days in his timing. He is patient and loving, our Elohim. Are we sure, though, Ezra is not saying all believers are raptured out of the tribulation here? Incredibly sure. Let's continue where he will specify. For as I conceive in my understanding... Now, this is Ezra explaining, basically recapping what he has seen here, saying, this is what I understand. Woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. Ah, now there is the actual term left behind in Scripture. You won't actually find it in Revelation exactly. Who is he talking about here? This is the end, which we already covered in The Man from the Sea, I think part 13, a few weeks ago in this series. Check it out. The multitude of the world, the unbelievers, turn from their battles, even with each other. And they all focus on fighting Yahusha. Yes, they hate him that much. The world does now already, and it's just going to get more worse and more perverse. Again, he takes those believers into the air, or raptures them, not to heaven, but we watch from the air, which is the point. We should see this. And he then consumes all of his enemies with fire from his mouth. So here, in this context, and the true use of the phrase, left behind, refers to believers that are in the air, who are still here, or left behind, as they are not consumed with the wicked, who are no longer left behind. They're gone. Yeah, I want to be left behind indeed, don't you? That is a good thing. For they that were not left were in heaviness. Indeed, but he uses this term, left behind, again. Go to chapter 13, verse 22. Whereas you have spoken of them that are left behind. This is the interpretation. We love this about this book. The angel, or Yahuwah himself, often explain the vision so we cannot really misunderstand it. He that shall endure the peril in that time. Oops, you mean believers have to endure the tribulation, the peril? Yep, consistent with all of Scripture, folks. Nothing new. New for many of the church who have, you know, basically profaned scripture. Has kept himself. How do you do that during the tribulation? It says in Revelation even. Here's the patience of the saints who keep his commandments. Continue in relationship with him. If you love me, you keep my commandments, he said. And do not allow anything to derail you. Someone made a good point in comments, and this is important, I'll bring it up. The likely largest reason much of the church will fall away in the great falling away, as we covered, is because they see the beast rise and realize they've been lied to by the church. And that's going to happen, folks, because he will rise and we will be here. Believers will be here, whether it's this age or the next. For some... They'll search deeper as a result to know him, and they'll find him. But many will fall away, likely for that reason. The church is planting that bomb of unbelief without even realizing it. We don't believe any pastor's doing that on purpose. Others have said, perhaps an alien who will be a Nephilim, as there are no aliens, and they say that, will be unveiled to mankind. He'll be called an alien. He'll be branded an alien, but he's no alien. He's just a Nephilim and nothing new to Scripture. And that will shake many people's faith because they are not taught about the Nephilim, uh, understanding that there are no aliens and understanding what that is standing before them. So no surprise if that happens as well. Either way, 
The great falling away, you can already kind of see things playing out how it could happen even today, whether we know exactly or not. We don't need to know exactly. They that be fallen into danger. Now, these aren't falling away. Check this out. This is during the tribulation. That's the danger. Come on. We read that, especially in Revelation. They even beheaded. Okay, so there's major danger for believers in that day. And there just is, okay? We aren't to worry about it. It's just fact. Read it all in context. That's what it says. How can believers fall into danger if we are not there? Oh, we can't, can we? It doesn't work. We will be there, thus fall into danger. How do we know these are believers? Keep reading. Are such as have works and faith towards the Almighty. That's believers. And there we go again, not just having faith alone, but the works or signs that follow true believers such as keeping his commandments, including his Sabbath. Read, rest, the case for Sabbath, and you will never question his Sabbath again, I assure you. Know this, therefore, that they which be left behind, there's the term again, are more blessed than they that be dead. Wow. So, there you go. Those left behind are those who survived physically the tribulation. And perhaps uh, you could try to include the, the, the raised dead there, but it says more blessed even than those that are dead. Okay, so you could take that two different ways. You could say, you know, spiritually dead, the people that were consumed, that's fine. Um, or you could say even more blessed than those who were resurrected from the dead. Um, but these are those that meet him in the air. Here's your rapture. There it is. They are left behind in the rapture. (laughs) That is the rapture. Not the other way around. It's so backwards. Notice uh, it's more blessed to be left behind in the accurate definition of the phrase from actual scripture. Probably borrowed by Tim LaHaye, who wrote the Left Behind series. However, used in ignorance, typical of his entire denomination, and much of what he preaches. Just about all of those in his denomination as well, and most denominations out there, if not all. Skip to verse 26. The same is he whom Elohim the highest has kept a great season. No, Yahuwah does not leave us alone to suffer That requires a great misreading of Scripture. He has kept us. Some will lose their lives, though. Let's be clear. And you will be honored in doing so. So if that is you, and uh, likely no one living today is going to see that period as we have defined that in parts 9 through 11, but we're still very, very close, folks, the last century. Which by his own self shall deliver his creature. How does he deliver his creature? By ridding the world of evil and replenishing it and giving us eternal life. Is that not in new bodies, for that matter? Is that not enough that some would say, well, I don't want to be martyred? And really? What difference does it make? It it has no meaning whatsoever, uh, except you'll be honored for it. He said some will. And accept such honor if that is yours. We would do so gladly. However, there will be those who will be delivered alive on Judgment Day as well, as we have seen. And he shall order them that are left behind. There it is again. You could read this a few ways, but he essentially orders the steps of true believers. He says that in Scripture. He will get the world in order. For us, for the first time since Adam sinned, really. Another way of looking at that, and maybe it's both. Oh yeah, don't go blaming that on Yahuwah. He didn't sin. This is the only way we can truly live in His holy presence. Realize that. He's too holy for you to live in His full presence. Just look at Sinai. Read what happened there. You would not survive His full presence if you were living in sin. We must be holy, and man is not right now. We know this. That's not a surprise. 
So we're going to split this as it is way too long for one video, but this topic is far too important to leave anything out. We won't cover everything, everything, but this is pretty comprehensive, and we have truly tested the rapture. In the next video, we complete the rapture research. We'll talk about the two groups that are recorded in heaven in Revelation, as well as second estrus. Why are they in heaven? And are they raptured? We'll see. Then we'll answer several more questions with more scripture. There's just so much, including the separation of the sheep and the goats, the wheat and or the wheat and the tares. Uh, Jacob's trouble. What is it? Who is beheaded in the great tribulation? And we'll finish with a Dead Sea Scroll reference and a full wrap up. You don't want to miss. We hope you have all learned, or at least confirmed, as I know many of our viewers already know the rapture doctrine of most of the church is false. At least a little something. This ends debate, my friends, between this and the next video, these three together, this issue is done. We have over 300 videos on this channel, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos with Spanish coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube, well, they forget to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. And friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. We now have five books published internationally being read in over 80 countries, with our new release now available and in stock in the Philippines even, Rest, the 400-plus page case for Sabbath. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books, or you can go to the direct websites, RestSabbath.org, BookOfJubilees.org, and TwoEstras.org as well, and we have LeviteBible.com. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.
In 400 BC, the prophet Ezra predicted, For my son Yahusha shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Essentially, 0 BC, the era Messiah was born, and by his very name, in exactness. After these years shall my son Messiah die, and all men that have life. The origin of John 3.16 And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed you before. And then shall my son be declared, whom you saw as a man ascending. Even the end times are defined long before the book of Revelation, the son of Elohim being confessed in the world. After seven days, the world will be raised up, mass resurrection of those who are asleep, the judgment seat, evil will disappear. The Lion of Yehuda will consume the final empire, consuming his enemies with fire from his mouth. The lost tribes return. Every eye shall see him handing out crowns and giving palms. The road to salvation is a narrow gate. Few are saved. The Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life are opened in the end. He is not willing that any should perish. The signs of the end times and origin of Matthew 24 in part. These are just some of the many prophecies in the book of 2 Esdras, long before the book of Revelation was conceived. Second Ezra, written before John's revelation. This is the interpretation of the dream which you saw, and whereby you only are here lightened. For you have forsaken your own way, and applied your diligence unto my law, and sought it. That's Yahuwah speaking to the prophet Ezra. Second Ezra is dated at least 1st century B.C., as it is used to interpret Habakkuk and blessing of the prince of the congregation who is Messiah. This includes a radiocarbon dating testing uh, as well of one fragment from 120 to 5 B.C. We cover this in the introduction. This book includes 1st Esdras as well, which is also dated to the 1st century BC, when one examines what is called in fraud the Proto-Ester fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls, which do not remotely fit Esther, but are a match to 1st Esdras. We cover this in the introduction of this book, as well as on our YouTube uh, videos on Esther in the original canon series. Second Esdras was quoted by Messiah according to the original authorized 1611 King James Version. Matthew 23, 37, and 38 is a direct quote from Second Esdras. Esdras, which is anchored right there in the margin note as the origin of Messiah's words. For Esdras is second Esdras, which we explain in the introduction. Yes, he quoted second Esdras multiple times. When accurately dated, 2nd Esdras proves the origin of significant doctrine in the New Testament. We cover many such instances in the introduction. There is a reason why these two books remain in some Bible canons to this day. They test as inspired scripture. Test them for yourself. 
Get your copy now, free in ebook. Again, this content is free. If you would like it in print, it is available on Amazon internationally and Shopee Philippines. Just go to twoesdras.org. Download the ebook, and the links are there for your area.